What you see here is a doll I made for my very first OpenTunes animation for a friend who is a big fan of burlesque dancing. And as you maybe can see, there are no outlines around the limbs here, except for a little bit here under the chin. And the reason for that wasn't that I didn't want to have outlines, but it was that I didn't know how to make them work when I was animating my little puppet. Like it would be easy to make them work for one pose, but then once you maybe stretch this arm or bend this leg, then it would stop working and you'd have to manually redraw it. And that kind of defies the whole purpose of having a puppet in the first place. So I just made my animation without outlines. And this pretty much remained this way until two weeks ago or so, when I think I came up with a solution for this. So let me show you so that you can form your own judgment. Let me go one frame down here. So I've rebuilt the leg part of my little puppet here using vector graphics. But you could do the same using Smart Raster. So it has to be one out of these two, either vector level or Smart Raster level. Raster by itself doesn't work. Or maybe there is a workaround, but I wouldn't count on it. You'll see soon why. So here's my little leg consisting of three different layers, uh, as you would expect. And um, so let me turn on preview to show you what you get. Uh, let's make this a little bit bigger. So this is what it looks like when I form one unified outline out of these three. So let's play around with this a little. Let me see. Let's turn this leg a little this way or the other way. And now maybe the same for the foot. Let's turn it this way, the other way. And now maybe let's grab the entire leg and put it somewhere else. Since this is a child, so I can do that. And now maybe let, let's put the leg across our other leg and a little further up. Okay, so this is what you get. And I find this for myself, I find this quite so far, I find this really satisfactory. It kind of gives me what I wanted. I'll have to play around with it uh, a bit more maybe to see if I get any artifacts, but so far I'm really happy with this. So let me show you how I did this. Okay, so to do that I'm going to create a new scene and start from scratch, since I always tend to find it much easier to understand when I can follow everything and see it being built up rather than having to understand somebody's um, schematic when it's all finished and so which can make it look quite convoluted. So I prefer to see the process of it being built up. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to save all and create a new scene. All right. Now I'm going to bring up a big schematic panel since this is what we are going to need. I'm going to dock it here. Okay. Pull this up because we don't really need a long timeline. And now 
I'll, I'll do this in vector again, just simply because it's faster. So here's my vector level. And I'm going to create two new styles, one for the outline and one for the fill. So let's start with the outline. And this is, uh, by the way, this is necessary for this process I'm going to use. Don't, don't, as always, don't make, leave this black, the color one alone and, and, and start with color two. So let's choose a dark gray for this and then for our fill color let's use some kind of yellowish color all right so we got our two colors now I'm going to create a, my shape and for this I'm going to uh, use an ellipse with an outline size of 0.6. All right. So let's draw a little ellipse. And that's it. And now for our second shape, I'm just going to use two shapes. To, if that's enough to demonstrate what I want to demonstrate. I'm going to simply select this and copy and paste it with while having preserved thickness ticked on so that I get the same outline thickness. Control C, Control V. As you can see, it doesn't behave like a group because I didn't tick on uh, what you need to tick on for this. So let's group this and maybe let's, let's um, deform this a little. So that we can easily distinguish our two shapes. Okay, so let's put one over the other. So we've got two different shapes, one on top of the other. Now to make things easier, let's bring this to a new level. I've created them on the same level so that I would could easily by copying that I would get the same colors for free. So I'm going to select our second shape, Control X, Control V. All right. So we've got our two shapes, one on top of the other. And uh, we, what we want to do now is create our uniform outline for the, these two shapes. So the Basically, through simply through being on top of the other, the the the, the parts of the, the lower shape are being covered, so we are right there. And the one bit that that we don't want to get rid of is this bit of the outline of the upper shape. So we've got our two shapes, one on top of the other, and to get to a uniform outline, what we want to do is get rid of this bit of the outline of the upper shape. So the fill is okay, the fill can remain, the fill must remain maybe even, to cover up what's underneath, but it's that, part, that bit of the outline uh, that we want to get rid of. So if we can do that, if uh, then we're basically our job is practically finished. So what we'd like to have is a way to address outline and fill separately so that we can do different things to them. And luckily there's a way to do just that. So to do this, let's bring up our two layers here. Okay. So I've, I've put the one, the, the, the upper layer on top here, so that it's easier to see which is which. Let's create a bit of room here. All right. So this is our upper layer. 
and what we are going to do now is to split this up into outline and fill and we are going to do this using a palette filter two palette filters to be precise and the proper way to do this would be if you want to do this I'd recommend you to insert a palette filter here to get the fill first and then add another palette filter to get the outline that's the proper way to do it so let's do it this way and then I'll show you what happens when you do it the other way around so let's let's do insert effects Tahoma 2D level that's where our palette filter is and let's bring up a palette filter and let's turn on preview mode so that we can see what it does and let's double click it okay so we want to create we want to just get our fill here and to do this I'm going to here you have the option to either delete or keep something and in this case I'm going to delete the outline and keep everything else to get just our fill and as you can see it does what we wanted it to do all right so we got that so now next time add an effect instead of insert before we did insert now do add choose again to homer to d level palette filter let's bring this down and let's, let's link this up with the scene double click it and this time since we just want the outline here let's select keep and again use the same number because we have the same order of numbers here in our two palettes so this one color 2 again is our color for the outline so this time we, we delete everything except for color 2 which should give us our outline so let's check if this is the case by deleting temporarily deleting this connection here and as you can see it gives us our outline okay so we've got those two separated now let me quickly demonstrate to you what happen what happens if you should uh, do this in the in the other order by starting with the, the outline so let's change the upper one to be the outline and this one to be the fill by just changing keep and delete so i'm going to double click this and change here to delete and then i'm going to click on this and change here to keep so now when you look at what this gets us you can see that the outline all of a sudden became a lot thinner which is basically due to the fact that now our fill is on top of the outline and it cuts away part of the outline so that's not what we want that's the reason why i suggest you always start by inserting by doing the fill first and then the outline so there's two ways if, if you should end up with this there's two ways you can change this you can either introduce an over here and make this the top one and and this the bottom one you have to delete this direct connection and and pipe both through the the um, over effect or the simpler way is to just change those back to what they were previously so now everything is okay again I just uh, wanted to quickly demonstrate this because this is something that can easily happen okay so we got our two shapes one on top of the other and we, we've taken the top shape and split it up into uh, into fill let's call this fill and outline So 
what we want to do is to get rid of the part of the outline that is on top of our bottom shape. And the way to do this is by using a matte out. So let's insert a matte out effect. Insert effect. Matte. Matte out. And let's use the bottom shape as our mat. And this is pretty much uh, what we need to do, most of what we want to do. There's one little thing we have to add because if you if we zoom in here, you can see that there's a bit of a gap here because um, we deleted a bit too much of the outline. We would like the outline to go on for a little bit longer and the way to do this is by making the so we're using the the, the bottom shape as our mask to erase part of the outline so if this mask was to be a bit smaller we'd erase less of the outline and we can do this by by inserting um, another matte effect which is called the erode effect which can be used both to make it smaller or bigger and in, in our case we want to make it a bit smaller and you do that by typing in minus two for example and then as soon as you close this out you can see that now our gap is closed okay so that's pretty much what i wanted to show now let's um Maybe move this around for a bit to see if it does what we want it to do. And I would say it's looking good. All right. So uh, how good of a solution is this? Well, personally, the, the answer is going to be a bit uh, specific to your preferences and but I would say on, on the technical side, I'm very happy with this so far. It does exactly what I wanted to do. The cost, of course, is to that you have to build up this uh, little construction here in, in your schematic window. And this is only for two shapes here. As soon as you have a more complex figure, you may have to do several ones of these. And maybe combine like if one shape is on top of two different shapes at the same time you may have to combine those with an o using an over so this is kind of the price you have to pay and um, you have to understand how this works i find this quite intuitive but that might be due to having used this trick of splitting up um, my drawings into outline and fill for quite some time it's it's actually something i use for lots of different problems and i find it really handy to uh, say to create my own versions of certain effects that's one thing i would use it for and i've even used it to do entire animations within one and the same vector level by combining it with the free distort but Okay, so that to me this is, has become quite easy to do and natural to do, but it may take a little time to get used to. So this is pretty much what I wanted to share. And um, if you should want to give this a try, let me know how well it worked for you. I'd be curious to hear about that.